Coming up, AOPA stands firm against user fees for general aviation, what the Trump ATC privatization proposal means for you, and what your association is doing about it. Plus, a newly certified Cessna model and how to ditch that old vacuum pump. And it takes real skill and nerves of steel. We fly with a young ag pilot. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and flying with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. The president wants to privatize air traffic control and hit general aviation with user fees to pay for it. I'm Warren Morningstar sitting in for Tom Haynes this week. Monday, the president announced his principles for modernizing the U.S. air traffic control system. We live in a modern age, yet our air traffic control system is stuck painfully in the past. The FAA has been trying to upgrade our nation's air traffic control system for a long period of years. But after billions and billions of tax dollars spent and the many years of delays, we're still stuck with an ancient, broken, antiquated, horrible system that doesn't work. So here's what the president wants to do. Create a not-for-profit, non-governmental entity to run air traffic control. Transfer all of the government's air traffic control equipment and buildings to this new entity for free. Charge everyone a user fee to use air traffic control services and eliminate the current aviation taxes on fuel and tickets. All right, so let's uh, dive deeper into the proposal, the promises and the critiques of the current ATC system. First, is it broken? Well, I talked to AOPA President Mark Baker. Okay, so Mark, the uh, president says that we have a horrible system. Is, what's the opinion of AOPA members on uh, air traffic control system? Well, you know, I think that adjective uh, suggests it's a lot worse than it is. Uh, I think uh, from the feedback I get from our members is, as you know, well over 300,000 folks. We just don't register any complaints about towers, in route controllers, uh, and I fly in the system a lot myself, and I can tell you it, it works pretty darn good. It could be better, and I think we all agree that uh, there are things we could do to improve, but uh, it's not broken. Nevertheless, the president says a privatized air traffic control system would make things much, much better. If we adopt these changes, Americans can look forward to cheaper, faster, and safer travel, a future where 20% of a ticket price doesn't go to the government, and where you don't have to sit on a tarmac or circle for hours and hours over an airport, which is very dangerous also before you land. Well, now, Melissa, you've been working on uh, air traffic control issues for most of your career here at AOPA. So is there really a problem with the ATC system? So, no, certainly not from our perspective. In fact, the statist statistics don't bear that out. Uh, this has been studied quite a bit, and data from the Bureau of Transportation Statistics points the finger at the airlines themselves. The data crunchers say that 50% of the delays are due to things like that the airlines control, things like aircraft maintenance, crew scheduling, and refueling. Weather accounts for about 30% of the delays. Air traffic control and other infrastructure issues represent only about 15% of delays. And that includes delays because the airlines schedule more flights than an airport can handle in instrument conditions. So there are some things that can be done with air traffic control to improve the flow a little bit more. We know from uh, sitting on the Next Gen Advisory Committee that about 70% of all tra air traffic delays emanate out of the Northeast. Some, some cases it's based on weather, some cases it's based on available terminal space, ramp space, runway space for the airliners in that very congested northeast quarter. So I think we should focus on infrastructure projects that include possibly more concrete, more uh, terminal space, and some of those busy congested spaces. But the idea that you're going to get to somewhere a lot faster and a lot cheaper, I think is somewhat uh, yet to be figured out. And we're a lot further along in air traffic control modernization than you might think based on what the president said. For example, we're well down the path to ADSB and transitioning away from radar. 
And you know, Melissa, the savings may not be all that big either. The president said that some 20% of the ticket price wouldn't go to the government anymore, but you know, it's still going to have to go to that private air traffic control business. And you can bet that the airlines are going to pass the user fee cost on to the passengers. As long as it doesn't impede general aviation, we want to be supportive of the airlines. We'd like to see everybody move faster at a lower cost. But it can't come at the expense of the $200 billion of economic activity that general aviation provides, as well as million, dollar, million jobs out there today in general aviation. It's an important part of reaching rural America, touching bases with businesses or family. No one should be su surprised to know that AOPA has been consistently against uh, user fees. So having said that, what should our members be doing now? Well, I think uh, at, at this very point in time is getting smarter. Uh, getting smarter means when the bill comes out, uh, which again will be hopefully here sometime in late June, is to really inform ourselves about what are the issues, what is the governance, what are they really trying to accomplish here. Some of the things in that bill could be pretty positive for us and we want to be aware of those things. We think there could be positive points about technologies we'd like to see evolve. But if there is user fees on any form of general aviation, we'll need to rally the troops and oppose this bill. And 15 general aviation organizations joined AOPA in a letter to the president reminding him that the U.S. air traffic control system is the best in the world. The advocacy groups reiterated their opposition to user fees. And it's not just GA that has problems with the proposal. Many members of Congress are uneasy with the idea. At a hearing on Wednesday, Senator Bill Nelson of Florida said he, op he is opposed to ATC privatization in any form. And he particularly didn't care for a system that would be dominated by the major airlines. If the airlines can't even manage their own IT systems, you can imagine if, if you took and put all of that over into air traffic control, uh, that doesn't give us a very good result. Well, big news out of Wichita. Textron has just announced FAA and EASA certification for the new JTA diesel Skyhawk. The airplane is powered by the Continental CD-155 engine with FADEC. The result is a 50% range increase and a 10-knot boost in cruise speed along with lower fuel burn. It will also feature the new Garmin G1000 NXI avionics panel. Drones are taking center stage in the desert. NASA is testing their next phase of the UAS traffic management system on the Reno Stead test range in Nevada. Five different drones were used in a variety of capacities, including beyond visual line of sight of the operator and the parachute package delivery system. The idea is to test ability to manage beyond line of sight operations as drones continue to integrate into the national airspace system. And Warren, uh, as you know, AOPA has been a leader in the drone space in terms of advocating for safe integration. And in fact, I was preparing for a meeting recently and was digging through my file. I found a letter from, I won't tell you what year it's from, but it was a, a letter I had written regarding a, a, a rulemaking committee I was on to integrate uh, drones safely, although back then we called them remotely piloted aircraft. There was no such thing as a quadcopter, but guess the year. Oh, let's see. Uh, 2002. 1992. 92. So, <laughs> but we, you were just a baby. <laughs> no, far from it. But my, my, we have been working this hard. We will continue to work it. We think they're an important part of the, the industry, and we want safety for all. Yeah, that's right. We all, we all play in the same airspace. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it's now 8,000. Actually, more than 8,000 pilots are now certified under Basic Med. Basic Med is an alternative means of certification that allows many pilots to fly without a third class medical certificate. You can find out more about Basic Med in our Fit to Fly resources on our website. You can find it under the blue Basic Med tab. We also have a new podcast with AOPA Medical Director Gary Crump. He discusses the latest info on Basic Med and what we've learned since it was first made available in May. You can find that under Training and Safety, Online Learning, Podcasts, Hangar Talk. And some more great news now. You may remember Tango Flight. It's a program in Georgetown, Texas, where high school students were building an RV-12. Well, when we last visited a few short months ago, the airplane looked like this. Last week, it took its first flight and flew off the test towers. And now it's giving rides to the students who helped build it. 
Ah, what a great success story. And Tango Flight participated in the AOPA High School Aviation STEM Symposium, and that's part of the You Can Fly program. It's a gathering 80 years in the making, and it's happening this July. Cubs to Oshkosh is a massive gathering of Piper Cubs to mark 80 years of the design. They are planning to meet in Hartford, Wisconsin, starting on July 21st. Like they did five years ago for the 75th, as you see here, there will be a mass arrival to Air Venture. AOPA Live will be there to cover the gaggle of beloved tail draggers. If you'd like to participate, you can find out more on the Cubs to Oshkosh Facebook page. When we come back, coming to a panel near you, a new way to use Garmin glass. And low and fat, one young ag pilot's life over the field. Did you know it's now fully legal to fly your plane to Cuba? Call the experts at Cuba Handling and we'll walk you through the process. Our team will make your flight simple and we'll create the experience of a lifetime. From hotels to cultural experiences, we do it all. Visit cubahandling.com. Welcome back. Well, who says there's no such thing as a home field advantage? Don't tell that to Yoshi Moroya. The Japanese pilot took home his second straight series win over the weekend in Chiba, Japan. Americans Kirby Chambliss and our own AOP Ambassador Michael Goulian both made it into the round of eight. The series continues in Budapest on July 1st and 2nd. Hey, I'll say, um, uh, Tower, this is, um, uh, uh, no, well, has that ever happened to you? We've all heard it before and many of us have done it. Started talking on the radio without figuring out what to say first. Well, the Air Safety Institute has a new video that can help you plan what to say. It's called the four W's of communication. Arrow County traffic, Bonanza 9 or 2, 51 Sierra, 10 miles southwest, 2,500 inbound Carroll County. It often helps to plan out what you're going to say, but the idea is to say only what you need to in a short and concise way. You can find the video on the Air Safety Institute YouTube channel. More options are available now to install affordable avionics from the experimental market into certified airplanes. Garmin received an STC for the G5 electronic flight instrument to act as a replacement directional gyro or HSI in certified aircraft. Garmin already has an STC to use the G5 as a primary attitude indicator. When paired with certain navigators, the G5 can be the primary display for heading, GPS, VOR, and localizer guidance along with distance and ground speed. A setup with two G5s eliminates the need for vacuum pumps. The kit from Garmin, including two G5s, costs just under $4,600. And in other avionics news, the FAA published the final rule for the airworthiness directive concerning some NAVWORKS ADS-600B transceivers. Now, the FAA says that some of the units are unsafe because the internal GPS doesn't meet the FAA's performance standards. To comply, owners can disable the unit or couple it with an approved GPS source. Now, there is a software upgrade, but it's only good until the end of 2019 when the ADSB mandate kicks in. Have you flown with a flight instructor in the last year? We're looking for feedback on your flight training experience for our 2017 experience survey. We want to know the good, the bad, and the awesome. You can win some great prizes, too. The information will be used to improve flight training across the country and honor the best of the best. And speaking of the best, one of the most demanding flying gigs in the country is aerial application, or crop dusting. These brave pilots duck around obstacles and fly just a few feet off the ground. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran caught up with a young ag pilot who makes his living flying a thrush over the fields of South Dakota. For Isaac Wild, crop dusting is the combination of two lifelong passions. I've always kind of had a love for farming and realized that I like flying too. I, I still get to work with the farmers on a daily basis, which I think is just a, a joy. After flying for another company, 24-year-old Isaac decided to start his own business, Wild Air Service, based in Brookings, South Dakota. Really started out with, I went to the bank and asked the banker if there was any way this was even possible, and he goes, yep. So from there on out, it was kind of like, okay, let's do this, you know. There are only a couple thousand ag pilots in the U.S., but their work is essential to U.S. farmers. Aerial application is the fastest way to fertilize the crops and protect them from insects. Insects can do a lot of damage within 24 hours. So when we can go out and get 150, 200 acres an hour 
sprayed, you know, we can get a lot of work done in a day where you just can't get that with a ground applicator. Isaac does his spraying in a Thrush S2R with a 600 horsepower Pratt & Whitney engine. The thing burns through fuel like no other, <laughs> but it does a really nice job for what I use it for. It's kind of an entry level airplane, still big enough to get the job done, but not the cost of a turbine. Ag planes need so much power to carry the heavy liquid loads out to the fields. And we're carrying 400 gallons of liquid and another 100 gallons of fuel. You'll see how slow we take off and how much runway we burn up. And these things, they're rather doggy when you land, or load them up to max gross. Flying with all that weight is just one of the many challenges that ag pilots face. One of the most challenging things is the weather. Daily we fight temp, dew point, humidity, and wind especially is our big challenge and rain and but it's just part of our task our job that we got to put up with you know maneuvering around obstacles is also a major challenge for the pilots who fly just a few feet above the ground we, we do a lot of calculated risks you know it, it, what a, pers a normal person might think is risky to us it's maybe another day in the office but that unique day in the office is what keeps isaac busy flying over the fields helping the farmers protect their crops the experience is, like I said, no other. You know, it, it's an adrenaline rush, but at the same time, it's still work. I, I mean, you get your days when uh, the day is just taking forever, the air is really rough and bumpy, the airplane's not flying the way you'd like, you know. But then you get the days when you just got to pinch yourself and say, man, I can't believe they're paying me to do this, <laughs> you know. In Brookings, South Dakota, Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. Oh, that was a nice story from Josh. Say, Melissa, did you notice that there weren't any flag people at the ends of the fields? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's all driven by GPS now. That little box that sits on top of the cowling there gives them the guidance from GPS. And if you can fly a very precise ILS, you can lay down a, a straight row on the fields as well. It looks like a challenging job, but it sounds like he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it for this edition. Join us back here next Thursday for another AOPA Live this week. Take care, everyone. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft.